Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG Crave Phaser 3. Previously, we took a look at the program Tiled, and we saw how we could use this program to go ahead and create levels for our game, and how we could add metadata to our map to go ahead and import that data into our Phaser game. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so now that we've reviewed how we can import our data in from Tiled and reviewed how we can build out our level, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump back to our code and we're going to continue working on using our data from Tiled to build out our game. So previously, we saw how we could create layers from our exported out JSON file, and that's how we created our collision layer. And so next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can go ahead and create an object layer and then use this layer to go ahead and create our interactable sign objects in our game. And then that way we can use the custom data attributes that we added for getting the message from our sign and then display that to our player. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and jump over to our code. And what we'll want to do is we'll want to come back to our world scene. And what we'll want to do is we're going to want to come to our create method. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to go ahead and create a new type. And this is going to be an object layer. So previously, uh, when we went ahead and created our collision layer, we were creating a basic layer uh, from tiled. And when we created our level uh, in tiled for our sign layers, we went ahead and added in custom objects for our signs. And on these objects, we added in our property for our messages that we want to display to our player. And since these are an object, we need to go ahead and create an object layer so then that way we have access to that data in our game. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's go ahead and copy this lines of code here and we'll come down below where we create our collision layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add in a comment and we'll just do create interactive layer. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and update our name. And so we're gonna need to store a reference to our sign layer because we'll need to reference this when we're checking for updates in our update method. That way we can grab the data uh, from this layer. So what we'll do is we'll make a new property and we're gonna call this sign layer and we'll set it equal to our map. And instead of create layer, we want to do get object layer. And what this method will do is if we provide the name of one of our object layers uh, from our JSON file, Tile's gonna go ahead and grab that data and return it to us as an object layer. And so for this, the only thing we'll need is the name of that layer, and we just call this sign in our level. So then what we're gonna go ahead and do is for our if statement, we'll just make sure we have our object layer. And if we do not, we'll say encountered error while creating and we'll just say sign layer using data from tiled. So then what we'll do is let's go ahead and create our new uh, private property. So we'll come to the top of our class, go ahead and add that in, and then let's go ahead and just add in our type. And so this is going to be phaser, tile maps, and now this is going to be object layer. And so real quick, what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and council log our layer, and then we can go ahead and take a look at it. So we'll go down below our if statement, we'll do council log, and we'll add in our sign layer, and then if we jump over to our browser, we'll go ahead and inspect it. And so if we take a look, we see we have a new object uh, in our console. And so this object here will have the layer name that we provided, and it will have a type of object group, and then inside this object group, it's going to have all of the objects that were inside that layer. And for each of these objects, these represent the objects that we added in the tiled program, and then it will have properties, which will be an array of the custom properties that we added. And so we can see here, we have our message property and we have the type, and then we have the value. So our string that we want to display to our player. And we'll go ahead and remove our console log. All right, so now that we have our object layer, what we're gonna to wanna to do next is down in our update method, we're gonna to wanna to check for when our player is next to one of our objects. And then if they press the space key, we would want to go ahead and grab that metadata for that object. So to do this check, let's come down to our update method. And what we'll do is before we do our player update method, let's go ahead and add in an if statement and we're going to check if our space key was pressed. So we'll refer to our controls and we'll do was space key pressed. And what we'll also do is if the space key was pressed and the player is not moving, then we will go ahead and call a new method. 
And so for this method, we're just going to call this handle layer interaction. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add that right down here. And then to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to do console log and we're going to do start of interaction check. So just to validate that's working, if our player is on our screen, if we press space, we should see that. And if we try pressing press the space while they're moving, we should see no uh, console log line. So to see if our player is actually interacting with an area of objects, the first thing we're going to have to do is determine our player's position and then check the tile that is next to a player based on the direction they are facing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do const and we'll do x, y, and we're going to grab this from our player sprite. And then with those values, we're going to go ahead and get our target position uh, using our util method. Uh, so we'll do const target position. We'll set it equal to get target position from uh, game object position and direction. And then what we'll do is we're going to pass in our x, y value for our position. And then we'll need to go ahead and pass in our direction. So we're just going to do our player and we'll grab our direction from our player. So now that we have our target position, what we want to do is we want to check our object layer to see if there's actually an object at that position. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to loop through our objects and our sign layer. So what we'll do is let's make a new variable. We'll do const, and we're going to call this nearby sign, and we're going to set it equal to this. Our sign layer that we assigned, we're going to grab the objects. And then so this is going to be an array of objects. And we're going to do find and in our find function what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll have our object and what we'll want to look for is if our object does not have an x value or our object does not have a y value we're going to go ahead and return and so this is just a safety check just to make sure our objects have the properties we need before we reference them and then what we'll just want to do is compare this to our players uh we want to compare these to our target position. So we'll say our object x value is equal to our target position x and our object dot y value minus our tile size is equal to our target position dot y. All right, so real quick, uh, the reason we're returning our object dot y minus our tile size is because in tiled, when we have our object data, the y value is going to align with the bottom of the tiled object that was added to the scene. And because we used a full sprite, the full size of one of our tiles, our y value is actually set to the bottom of that sprite. Versus in phaser, when we want to place one of our objects, we want it to be in the top left hand corner here. And so when we have our object's value here, we just need to subtract that tile size. So then that way we have the right y value that we're checking. All right, then real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and council log our nearby sign if one was found. All right, then what we should be able to do is if we come back to our scene, if we go ahead and move our player over by one of our signs, if we go ahead and press our space key while the player is not facing the sign, we should get undefined back because no object should be found. However, if we now face the sign and we press the space key, we should now have our object data from tiled. And then likewise, if we come up to the side of the sign, uh, we'll see the same thing and it works. All right, so then what we need to do is after we have our object, so let's go ahead and get rid of our council statement. And we'll do if our nearby sign exists, what we'll need to do is grab the properties array from our object. So what we're going to do is we'll make a new variable, we'll call it props. We'll set it equal to our nearby sign and our properties that are on that object. Then what we want to do is we're going to loop through our array of our properties and we want to find the one that has the name message on it. So what we're going to do is we do const message is going to be equal to our props dot find and we're going to look for a property where our property name is equal to message. And then what we're going to do is once we have that object, we only care about that value. So we're just going to add a check to see if that object was found. And if it is, we're going to grab that value. So now we're going to have our message, our string here that we want to display to our player. And so what we'll do is let's do a console log and we're going to console log our message. 
And now if we come back to our scene, let's go ahead and test really quick. Let's go to our sign. We hit the space key and we'll see here we have our string that we want to display. And then likewise, if we try to read our sign from the side, we get that message. All right, so now that we know how to grab the message from our sign, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add some safety checks to make sure our player is actually in front of our sign and facing up when they try to read it. And if they're not facing up, what we'll do is we'll display a placeholder text, something like, hey, you can't read the sign from this side. And that way, the player knows we'll need to go in front of the sign, and then we'll show the actual message that they want to, uh, and then we'll show the actual message that's on the sign to the player. And so for us to go ahead and do that check, what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll make a new variable, and we're going to do const use placeholder text. And we're going to set this equal to this. We're going to grab our player, and we're going to get the direction from our player. And if that direction does not equal direction up, then we'll use our placeholder text. So then what we'll do is we'll do let text to show. We'll set it equal to you cannot read the sign from this direction. And then what we'll do is we're going to add an if statement and we're just going to check to see if we need to use that placeholder text. So if not use placeholder text, what we'll do is we'll update our text to show to be equal to our message that was found. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a default. So then that way, if we don't actually have this property on our objects for one uh, for some reason, when we import our data, uh, we'll just have a fallback message. So then that way our game will continue to function. And so for this, what we're going to do is we'll just say, make sure to make sure you talk to NPCs for helpful tips. And then what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and update our console log to use our text to show variable. And then we're just going to go ahead and add in a return statement. All right. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and test our player being next to our sign, uh, but not uh, in front of the sign. And we'll see in our message, you cannot read the sign from this direction. And now if we come down below our sign, we should see our trainer tips and avoid battles. And then what we're going to do is back in our code, let's update our property name to be message two. We're just going to validate our fa uh, fallback logic works. So now if we talk to the sign, we'll see here, make sure to talk to NPCs for helpful tips. Perfect. All right, so now that we've confirmed that we're able to get our messages for our sign objects, what we're going to do is we're just going to refactor a few things and add in some types real quick. So the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and add in a type for our message so we know what our property uh, type is. Uh, so we know our message when we have it inside our JSON file is going to be a string, so we're just going to add that type here. And then for our properties, we're going to go ahead and define a new custom type. And we're going to call this tiled object property. And so for this type, we're just going to go ahead and add in the structure of our object that we expect for our tiled object property. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and just add that to the top of our file. And so then we're just going to add that to the top of our file. And so for our tiled object property, it's going to be an object structure, and it's going to have three uh, fields on our object. Uh, the first one will be our name, and then this is going to be the name of our custom property we added in tiled. And so basically, this is the type that we provided from tiled. And then finally, value, we're going to go ahead and type to any. Uh, and basically, value is going to be whatever we provide uh, from tiled. And so this is going to be dependent on the type here. And so if it's a string, this is going to be a string versus if it was a Boolean or a number, then this would have that appropriate type. And so for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and type this to any. And then that's why down here in our code, when we add in the type for our property, we're getting the from the value. We're just going to go ahead and manually specify so we can override that any. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our default text here and we're going to move this to our text utils file. So what we'll do is we're going to our text utils JS file. We'll come to the bottom of our file and let's make a new export const and we're going to do cannot read sign text. And we'll set that equal to our empty string and let's do export const and we'll do sample text. And what we'll do is let's copy those strings from our code. Uh, so we'll have our fallbacks so or sample text. And then we will have our cannot read the sign. We'll place that there. 
So then what we can do is let's go ahead and assign those strings to these variables uh, from that we'll go ahead and import. And we'll go ahead and update our import. And since we just did a minor refactoring, let's just validate everything still works. If we come into our game, let's go to one of our signs. If we go ahead and face the front, we get our message. And if we're on the side, we get our message by not being able to read the sign from that direction. All right, so now that we have our logic in place, uh, that actually brings it into this video. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on adding in a new uh, dialog UI component that's going to display messages to the player in our game. And so when we interact with our signs, we'll pop up a modal uh, that'll have the text of the sign. It's going to be similar uh, to like the dialogue uh, that's shown in our battle scene. And similarly, when the player interacts with NPCs, uh, we'll use that same component to display messages that the NPC is talking. And if we add any other objects in our game, uh, we can use it to display information to our player. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the completed source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.